Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about research union proposed by Saunders in 2007. At the simplest level, Saunders research union describes the different decisions that we need to take while developing research methodology. Whether it is for your dissertation, thesis or research writing, we work from the outside of the union in WAD. We will face a range of choices that progresses from higher or philosophical level to tactical or practical level. While Saunders Research Union is certainly not perfect, it is useful tool in for thinking holistically about the methodology of the research. At minimum, it helps you understand what decision you need to make in terms of your research design and methodology. The very first layer of the union is the research philosophy. What does that mean? Well, the research philosophy is the foundation of any study or research. It describes the set of beliefs the research is built upon. The research philosophy can be described from either an ontological perspective or epistemological view. So, what is this ontology? Ontology is what and how of what we know. In other words, it is the nature of the reality or what we really are able to know and understand. Epistemology is on the other hand is how we obtain knowledge and come to understand things. In other words, how we can figure out what reality is and what is the limit of our knowledge. This certainly aren't the only research philosophy, but there are other common research philosophy we will be discussing about. Positivism research takes the view of the knowledge exists outside of what is being studied. In other words, what is being studied can only be done so objectively and it cannot include opinion or personal viewpoint. The researcher doesn't interpret, they only observe. Positivism states that there is only one reality and that all meaning is consistent between subjects. So the research of the applied sciences, medical sciences is mostly based on positivism. In the positivism, knowledge can only be true, false or meaningless. Let's look an example based on the question of whether God exists or not. Since positivism takes the stance that knowledge has to be empirically rigorous, the knowledge of whether God exists or not is irrelevant. Thus, this topic cannot be proven true or false based on positivism. So then comes the another philosophy, interpretivism. On the other hand, side of the spectrum, the interpretivism emphasizes the influence that social and cultural factors can have on individuals. This view focuses on people's thought and ideas in light of the socio-cultural backdrop. With the interpretivist philosophy, the researcher play an active role in the study. It is necessary to draw a holistic view of the participant and their actions, thoughts, and meanings. Of your research, you may find that the individual originates from India, where schizophrenic symptoms like hallucinations are viewed positively, as they are thought to indicate that person is a split medium. This example illustrates an interpretivist approach, since as a researcher, would make use of the patient's point of view as well as your own interpretations based on the study of the case. Third philosophy is called pragmatism. Pragmatism highlights the importance of using the best tools possible to investigate the phenomena. The main aim of pragmatism is to approach research from a practical point of view, where knowledge is not fixed but instead a constantly questioned and interpreted. For this reason, pragmatism consists of an element of researcher's involvement and subjectivity. Let us look at an example the form of the trolley problem, which is a set of ethically and psychologically thought experiment. In this, participants have to decide on either killing one person to save the multiple people or allowing multiple people to die to avoid killing one person. In this experiment can be altered including details such as the one persons or the group of the people being family member or loved one. The fact that the experiment can be altered to suit the researcher's need is an example of pragmatism. In other words, the outcome of the persons doing the thought experiment is more 
important than the philosophical ideas behind the experiment. So the second layer of the onion is research approach. So research approach can be broad methods that you adopt for your research. It can be inducted, deductive, and as well as so research approach can be of three type deductive approach, inductive approach, as well as abductive approach. So inductive approach entails generating theories from research rather than starting at a project with a theory or foundation. Whereas deductive approach on the other hand begins with a theory and aims to build on it through the research. So an inductive approach could be used in the study of otherwise unknown isolated community there is very little knowledge about this community and therefore research would have to be conducted to gain information on the community thus leading to information or formation of theory on the other hand deductive approach would be taken when investigating changes in the physical properties of the animal over time and this would likely be rooted in the theory of evolution in the other one the starting point is well established pre-existing body of knowledge Whereas in the abductive approach, we use the combination of inductive as well as detective approach to arrive at any conclusion. Closely linked to the research approach are qualitative and quantitative approach. Simply put, qualitative research focus on textual, visual, audio, waste data, while quantitative research focus on numerical data. So what is the relevance of qualitative and quantitative data to research approaches well inductive approaches are usually used within the qualitative research while quantitative research tends to reflect deductive approach usually informed by positivist philosophy the reason for using deductive approach here is that quantitative research typically begins with theory as a foundation where progress is made through hypothesis testing. In other words, a wider theory is applied to a particular context, event, or observation to see whether this fits in the theory or not. So the two research approaches are inductive, deductive, and the new one is abductive approach, which is the combination of both inductive and deductive approach. So the third layer of is the research strategy. So we have talked about conceptual and research approaches. So here we will discuss about the research strategy. So this layer of the research onion details out based on the aim of the study, research can be conducted based on different methods like experimental research, extra research, case study research, grounded theory research, ethnographic research, archival research and other research can be done. So what is experimental research? Experimental research involves manipulating one variable or independent variable to observe a change in another variable that is dependent variable. In other words, to assess the relationship between variables, the purpose of the experimental research is to support, refute or validate a research hypothesis. This research strategy follows the principles of scientific method and is conducted within a controlled environment or settings. Experimental research aims to test existing theories rather than create new one, and such is deductive in nature. Experimental research aligns with the positivist research philosophy as it assumes that knowledge can only be studied subjectively and in isolation from external factors such as context or culture. Extra research. Excel research, the simplest way of describing Excel research is by saying that it involves learning through wait for it action. Excel research is conducted in practical settings such as classroom, the hospital, workspace, etc. as opposed to controlled environmental like lab. Excel research helps to inform researcher of the problems or weakness related to interactions between the real world. With Excel research, there is a strong focus on the participant, the people involved in the issue being studied. This is why it is sometimes referred to as participant extra research. This kind of research is generally applied to social sciences, specifically in the professions where individuals aim to improve on themselves and the work they are doing. 
Excel research is most commonly adopted in qualitative studies and it is rarely seen in quantitative studies. This is because as we see in the see in the real world. Case study research. A case study is detailed in-depth study of a single subject. For example, a person or a group or an institution or an event or phenomena or an issue. In this type of the research, the subject is analyzed to gain in-depth understanding of the issue in real life setting. The objective here is to gain in-depth understanding within the context of the study. It is vital that when conducting case study research, we take the social context and cultural into account, which means that this type of research is more often qualitative than in quantitative. And this is tends to be inductive in nature. It becomes grounded theory. So grounded theory is all about letting the data speak for itself. In other words, in grounded theory, you let the data inform the development of a new theory, model or framework, true to the name. The theory you develop is grounded in the data. Grounded theory is therefore very useful for research into issues that are completely new or under researched. Grounded theory research is typically qualitative, although it can also use quantitative data and take an inductive approach. Typically, this form of the research involves identifying commonalities between the set of the data. Results are then drawn from the completed research without the aim of fitting the findings in what is pre-existing theory or framework. Then comes ethnographic study. Ethnographic involves observing people in their natural environment and drawing meanings from their cultural interaction. The objective with ethnography is to capture the subjective experiences of the participants. Given the nature of the ethnography, it generally reflects an interpretivist research philosophy and involves an inductive or qualitative research approach. There are exceptions to this and so sometimes quantitative ethnography can be done when there is a lot of data available. Archival research. Archival research strategy draws from the materials that already exist, meaning in then established through a review of their existing data. This method is particularly well suited to historical research and can make use of materials such as manuscript, records, archaeological sites. So as you see, there is wide range of choices in terms of research strategy. The right choice for your project will depend largely on your research aim and objective as well as the choice you make in terms of research philosophy and approach. So next come layer 4, the choices. The next layer of the research opinion is simply called choices. They could have been a little more specific, right? But here they have mentioned how many data, quantitative, or there are three options, mono, mixed, and multi-method can be adopted. Choosing to use a mono method means that you are only make use of one data type, either qualitative or quantitative. So if you were to make use of both quantitative as well as qualitative data, you are using a mixed method approach. So this can be either a simple approach or based on the complex multi-method approach. With a multi-method approach, you make use of wide range of approaches with more than just one quantitative or qualitative data. You conduct a study looking at archives from a specific culture. You could make use of two qualitative methods such as thematic analysis and content analysis and then additionally make use of the quantitative method to analyze the numerical data found in the research. Then comes the fifth layer of the onion that is time horizon. So what's that far in the distance? It is the time horizon. The time horizon simply describes how many points in time you plan to collect your data at. Two options exist, cross-section and longitudinal time. Imagine that you are wasting time on a social media and think, oh, I want to study the language of memes and how this language evolves over time. For this study, you would need to collect data over multiple points in time, perhaps over a few weeks, months, or even years. Therefore, you would make use of longitudinal 
time zone horizon this option is highly beneficial when studying changes and progressions over time instead you wanted to study the language used in memes at a certain point in time for example in 2023 you would make use of the cross-sectional time horizon this is where data is collected at one point of time so you would be gathering data to see how language changes but rather what language exists in a snapshot point of time the type of data collected could be qualitative quantitative and mix of both and focus is on the time of the collection not on the data type with all the other choices the nature of your research and your research aims and objective are the key determinant to decide the time horizon you will also need to consider practical constraint such as the amount of the time that is available to accomplish your research work and the sixth layer final layer comes the techniques and procedures finally we reach the center of the onion this is where you get down to the real practice of the research you make choices regarding specific techniques and tools that you will be using for your research decide on what data you have collected and what data collection method that you use decide on how you will go sampling the population like you can use snowball sampling, random sampling, stratified sampling, convenient sampling, etc. And determine the data type that is data analysis there that will answer your research questions such as the content analysis, statistical analysis, correlation analysis, regression analysis, and other analysis. Set up the materials that will be using for your study such as writing up the questions for a survey and making other <coughs> experimental arrangements so what's important to note here is that these techniques and procedures need to be aligned with all the other layers of the research onion that the research philosophy research approach research strategy choices and time horizon so if you are adopting a detective quantitative research method it is unlikely that you will use interviews to collect your data you will want high volume numerical data which surveys are far better suited so you need to ensure that the decision at each layer of your onion align with the rest and most importantly that they align with your research aims and objective. So the research onion details the many interrelational choices that you will make. Research philosophy, it is the set of the beliefs that your research is based on like positivism, interpretism, pragmatism, critical realism, postmodernism it is in and it is also based on the research approaches like broader method like how you are using the methods like inductive detective abductive, abductive method qualitative quantitative or mixed method research strategy how you collect the research like experiment action research case study ethnographic study other what are the choices how many methods that you want to use mono method mixed method multi mixed methods complex mixed method etc time horizon the number of the point of time at which you wish to collect the data like cross-sectional longitudinal data and technique and procedure that you are going to use for data collection data analysis and interpreting the data that you have already collected so this is Overall, the Saunders Research Onion which is divided into six layers. Thank you. Thank you for the discussion. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Please like and share the video so that other scholars can get benefited. Thank you.